Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sendian's webinar. I am Shirley, and I'm a project manager here at Sendian, and it's a pleasure to have each and every one of you join us today. We have an exciting, informative session ahead of us, and we are so grateful for your attendance. Um, the purpose of today's webinar focuses on N4 HCM out of the box reports. Our presenter today will be Randika, and he is one of our human capital management subject matter experts. And today he will guide us through the intricacies of the out of the box HM report, providing valuable insights and practical information. Um, we've structured the session to ensure clarity and understanding, and we'll reserve time at the end of the session to address any questions you may have. So um, as we go along, please use the Q&A and then we'll address those questions at the end. Um, a quick introduction about us at Sendian. Um, at Sendian, we specialize in providing comprehensive services and solutions. And as in four partners, we offer managed services, assistance across various domains, including implementations, integrations, development, training, and more. So we extend our services beyond just in four, as we also serve as Microsoft partners, providing a wide range of IT services, which allows us to offer a holistic approach to your technological needs. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and hand over to Randika. Oh uh, yeah, thank you, Shirley. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar uh, today. Um, so first of all, let me give a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Randika Vijayasena, working as a senior consultant at CNDN. Uh, I'm specializing in uh, info HR and info process automation. Uh, and I have been working on Info HR uh, for about 12 years now, uh, and I have experience in both uh, implementation and support projects. Uh, so that's about me. Uh, so let's move on to our agenda for today's session. Uh, so as all of you know, uh, we will be discussing about the HR talent analytics or the uh, Info Burst HCM uh, reports. Um, so these are the main topics that we will be uh, discussing today. Uh, so overview to info uh, burst HCM. So we will go through a high level overview uh, on the burst HCM. Uh, and then data sync and troubleshooting. Uh, so we will be looking at how the data sync happens from info HR to analytics side and how we can troubleshoot the data issues. Uh, then key features and uh, demo. Uh, so we will look into few key uh, key features uh, on the dashboards uh, followed by a demo. And then uh, we will have the Q&A session. So uh, please make sure to post your questions or queries in the Q&A section uh, so we can discuss them at the end of the presentation. Uh, right, so let's move on to the first topic, which is the overview. Um, so when we uh, look at the reporting options uh, provided in InfoHR, so there are two main types of reports. Uh, first is operational reporting, uh, which presents uh, real-time data in a, a tabular format, uh, which can be filtered, sorted, and rearranged by users. Uh, the, the second type of reports uh, is basically the analytical reporting. Uh, so which presents a vis uh, visualization of data, which enables to interpret data patterns and trend analysis. Uh, so which will be our topic uh, for today. Um, so when you look at the operational reports, uh, it's delivered by a landmark. So therefore, it has real time data. Uh, so the changes you do in GHR will reflect in the operational reports at the exact same time. Uh, but analytical reporting, uh, it's delivered via burst analytics. Uh, therefore, it's not real-time data. Uh, so the reason is uh, the data in GHR or HR talent needs to be synced uh, to burst uh, side in order to display them in the dashboards. Uh, and this might take some time uh, because we need to schedule a job. There are a few jobs that needs to be scheduled in order to do this data uh, extraction. Uh, so we need to keep in mind sometimes uh, the changes that we do in uh, GHR side might not uh, show or display at the same time 
in the analytical dashboards. Uh, so it will take some time uh, to get the data sync and display the uh, details. Uh, another important uh, point in analytical dashboards uh, is basically the dashboards can have multiple uh, data sources. Uh, so we can have data from different business classes, classes in a single dashboard. So for an example, uh, you can see uh, this screenshot. Uh, it has a few uh, dashlets or widgets. Uh, so the, the pyramid shows the education details and then this uh, shows as employee by FTE group. Uh, and then we have average employee uh, of uh, period of time uh, and then the employee for supervisors by HR or unit level. So these uh, different dashlets, the data is coming from different business classes. Uh, for example, education details will come from employee education uh, business class and then uh, the work assignment business class is used uh, to get the supervisor details and then the employee business class is used. So all these different data sources uh, can have linked in one report with different uh, widgets. Um, so that's uh, another main point on the analytical reporting. Uh, so uh, talking about the out of the box reports. So Info has delivered about 150 different dashboards uh, and also over 400 uh, dashlets, uh, which is these small widgets uh, related to these areas. So we have uh, standard uh, dashboards on applicant details, compensation, uh, diversity and inclusion, HR talent employee, l and so on. So these are the main areas that we have the uh, out of the box uh, reports. Um, so apart from that, uh, we have the option of creating our own uh, dashboards and widgets as well. Uh, so you might need some more technical knowledge on that, but uh, we have the option of creating uh, them as well. Uh, yeah, so in terms of reporting, I would say this is a very uh, powerful tool where we can basically visualize our data and trends, uh, so which will help us to make our day to day work easier as well as to make our uh, strategic decisions. Uh, yeah, so let's move on to the uh, next slide. Um, data sync and uh, troubleshooting. So as we discussed earlier, also uh, HR analytics is delivered by uh, via Burst. Uh, therefore, the data in Info HR or GHR module should be synced to BERS uh, in order to generate the dashboards. Uh, so, analytical tool itself has a data extraction process uh, that can be scheduled daily, weekly, or monthly basis based on our requirement. Uh, and also, uh, the data that will be extracted in this process. Uh, will be an incremental data set. Uh, so meaning uh, the new uh, data that has been created or modified uh, after our last data sync will be uh, extracted to the analytics side. Um, also, when it comes to troubleshooting, so sometimes uh, you might come across uh, instances that the data you have created or modified in info HR side has not shown or not showing in the dashboards or any of the widgets, even after the uh, scheduled data sync has run. Uh, so as, as an admin user, only admin user will have this access. There are a few uh, steps that you can check in order to uh, troubleshoot this uh, data issue. Um, so one of the key reasons uh, for this data issue uh, could be a new set of master data that has been created in GHR. Uh, because I said uh, in the normal data extraction process, it will 
uh, get a uh, extract a incremental data set. Uh, so in this data set, uh, if you have created any master data in in uh, HR, it will not include that in the incremental data set. Uh, so that could be the issue where uh, in some cases that you won't be able to see the data even after the schedule uh, data run has uh, the data sync job has run. Uh, so for, for an example, let's say um, we have a basic employee uh, profile in the system uh, and the employee details have been seen um, to analytics side as well. And we want to create a, a employee uh, a education record. And for that, we, we will be creating a new education type and a new institute as well. Uh, so what will happen is after you create the data uh, and you run the data sync job or it will run on the schedule, uh, but still the details will not come. So the reason is we have created a master data and therefore the related transactional data will also not be come from the normal uh, extraction process. Uh, so in order to fix this, uh, there are another two jobs that we need to run. Um, so we have to run the delete all process data. Uh, so what will happen is this job will delete all the data uh, from the uh, analytic side. Uh, and then uh, we need to run this reset variables uh, job in order to reset all the variables. And then when we run the data extraction process, uh, what will happen is it will extract the whole data set again from HR side to uh, analytic side, including the new master data that we have created. Uh, so in this way, uh, if you have come across any issues uh, on, on data after the data sync, maybe we can try deleting the process data, reset the variables and then uh, do a data sync. So in most cases, it will fix the uh, issue. Uh, right, so let's uh, quickly go to the system and uh, just see how we can uh, schedule these uh, jobs uh, in uh, talent analytics uh, site. So, yeah. uh, so this is the login screen once you logged into the uh, system. Um, so for you to go to the HR talent analytics, can click on these nine dots and then select Info HR uh, Talent Analytics. Uh, so this is the new OS uh, portal. Uh, so you can click from here. And then if you are using the old portal, uh, so you can click here. It, sorry, old portal, uh, the Info HR Talent Analytics is so here, uh, yeah. So uh, this is the, the the landing page of the uh, talent analytics. So you can see uh, different dashboard collections in different areas. The areas which I showed you previously. So the dashboards related to employee analysis, management dashboards. Uh, then diversity and inclusion related uh, dash, uh, dashboards, so on. So we'll come to this in a bit. So first, let's see how we can schedule the uh, the data sync jobs uh, and then the other two jobs that we uh, can troubleshoot. So in order to do that, you need to go here, the global navigation menu, click here and then go to admin. Uh, portal. So there will be a uh, few other options available for admins in order to manage the, the whole uh, talent analytics tool. Uh, so this will be basically handled by uh, admins or birth consultants. Uh, so for us to see the data schedules, we can go here, orchestration, click here. <coughs> Um, so you can see different workflows related to different areas. So we have CSF, HR, and so on. 
so in HR, uh, we have three uh, jobs or, or processors. Uh, so as we discussed, we have the uh, exact and process uh, job. Uh, then we have the delete all process data and then reset variables. Uh, so in order to view the schedule, so maybe create a schedule, uh, you need to go here, click on options and then go to scheduling. Uh, so this will uh, show you the available uh, schedules uh, or if you want, we can create new schedules or modify them as well. So uh, in this environment, uh, we have scheduled this daily and we can see uh, a few schedules. So the reason is we have uh, scheduled this data sync job to run few times per day. Uh, so it uh, starts at 3 a.m. then uh, runs at again 10 a.m. Uh, then 1 p.m. likewise 5 p.m. and uh, one, uh, 10 p.m. again. So uh, in a production environment, uh, you don't need to have this many uh, schedules. Um, so we have done this just to make sure the changes that we do in JHR uh, to sync quickly uh, uh, to the analytics side. But based on your requirement, either you can have a schedule on a daily basis or uh, if not, even you can go for a weekly or monthly basis as well. Uh, so let's see uh, edit schedule. So you can uh, schedule this based on your requirement. Uh, so we can do daily, weekly or monthly. We can select the time and the time zone uh, and just save it. So it's a very simple uh, process uh, to schedule the job. Uh, so then it will run on, on these uh, schedules and think we can set up emails also for admins to get notifications when schedules are running. Um, so then based on this schedule, the incremental data set will uh, extract from InfoGHR to the analytics side. Uh, so similar way we have these two as well. Uh, so the delete process uh, data is also can be scheduled the same way. So in our environment, uh, we have scheduled that daily to run at uh, 1 a.m. Uh, central time. Uh, so what will happen is every day at 1 a.m. Uh, this uh, schedule will run and it will delete all the the process data from the uh, HR analytics side. And uh, so this will uh, related only for the HR data, right? So because we are using the HR uh, job, so we have CSF jobs separately. Uh, so it will delete all the process data from the uh, analytics side uh, and then we have the reset variable uh, job. So we have the job here. And if we check the scheduling, so it will run at 2 a.m. CST. So at 1 a.m., the delete job will run and it will delete all the data. And then by 2 a.m., uh, this job will run and it will reset the variables. So we are resetting the variables is because uh, we are going to get or uh, extract the whole data set again. So in order to do that, there are a few variables that we need to reset. Uh, so that's the purpose of this. And then after uh, reset variables job is completed, uh, as uh, uh, so we have the uh, first data extraction uh, uh, job be scheduled at 3 a.m. So at 1 a.m the system will delete all the uh, data from the side or the analytics side. Uh, at 2 a.m. it will reset the variables and then at 3 a.m. Uh, it will do a data sync. So all the data including the master data that we have created up to this point will be extracted to uh, analytics side. Uh, so for an example, as per this schedule, if we create a new master data, 
uh, today in the system. So by tomorrow uh, morning, uh, it will get synced with the analytics and all the dashboards will get updated based on that. Uh, so apart from that, uh, you can see there are different uh, steps. So basically, what are the steps that will be running each of these jobs? So uh, this is basically not to be changed unless you want to change anything specifically. But it's sorry, uh, recommended to uh, use the support of a BI consultant in order to change this if required. Uh, so, and also there are a few more admin uh, functions as well in this uh, admin portal. Uh, so it's always uh, to be used by uh, system admins in order to uh, maintain the the analytics uh, tool. Ah, uh, right. So that's about uh, on the data sync. Uh, scheduling uh, and how you can delete the data and then uh, do the uh, reset of variables. Uh, so let's move on to the PPT again uh, and let's see the next slide. Uh, so key features, let's look at some of the uh, key features in these dashboards. Uh, so the first uh, feature uh, is uh, view selector. Um, so as we discussed, you'll see there are different uh, dashlets or uh, widgets in these dashboards. So some are, uh, uh, could be pie charts, column charts, likewise. Uh, so as a user, uh, we have the option to change uh, the way it looks uh, to a certain extent. Uh, so if there is a pie chart, so for an example, you can see uh, this widget. So this is a, a pie chart, but if I want to uh, change it to maybe a bar chart or even a column or line, so we can change that uh, using the view select option. <clears throat> and also instead of this, if you want to see the data as a table, maybe like operational reporting with the data, uh, that is also, that option is also there. Uh, where you can uh, select uh, the view as a table. Uh, so again, uh, based on the widget we are using, the view select options will also vary. Uh, all the widgets will not have all these uh, options. So some will have more and some will have just, you know, a table or, or, or few options. And in, in some widgets, you might not see the view select option as well because if it's a table and if it's there is no way that you can present it on a on a, a, a chart so you won't have that uh, view select option so let's look into some uh, uh, examples in the system itself uh yeah so the, then we have this uh explore in uh, visualizer option so it's uh, it is also another feature where users can check the high level logic that has been used in different widgets or different uh, reports and also it allows uh, us to see the filters that has been used uh, and we can enable and disable uh, those filters uh, so maybe we can check uh, whether the data is showing or whether there can be a uh, restriction coming from this filter. So uh, uh, that uh, option is there for users to maybe do some changes uh, to the widgets and also check the uh, data. Uh, yeah, so we'll quickly move on to the system and just see how these uh, features works. Um, so let's do the system. I'll to uh, dashboard, let's see it. Analytics. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, let's go back here and mm -hmm. go to dashboard. Um, 
yeah so as i said uh, these are the different uh, collection of uh, dashboards uh, that has been uh, delivered on the out of the box content by info um, so let's see a uh, few of the records so just go to employee analysis so this is a, a, a standard report uh, overview report uh, under employee analysis so you can see uh, the education details shown as a pyramid um, then we have the employee by fte group uh, we have average employees period of a time so likewise the employee per supervisor and these details uh, so we have the option of filtering these as well uh, based on the um, so this is a filter for year and month so if i select let's say march and apply you can see it got changed based on the uh, date uh, right so let's look at how the view selector and uh, visualizer is working mm -hmm. so let me go to send the dashboard mm -hmm. so this is a dashboard that we have created uh, so i'll use this to uh, show few of the uh, features here uh, so view selector let's take this uh, employee by gender so if i click on this so every uh, widget on the dashlet have this uh, dashlet action button so if you click on this and click on view selector you can see there are few uh, chart types that i can change it to so let's say if i want to change this to a bar chart it will get changed to a bar chart uh, if it's a line i can change it to a line so likewise uh, we can use these options in order to change the look and feel of these widgets uh, so for an example let's say if we go here so if i go to the view selector so this doesn't have much options like we uh, the one we had in the employee by gender so this only has a table uh, option or and this view so if i select on table so it will show me the details as a table um, then uh, let's say this anniversaries so here if i go to the view selector actually i don't see a view selector here uh, because as per this uh, data set we can't basically show it in a in a chart it's just the date uh, of the anniversaries uh, so even the birthdays if we take this it doesn't have a view selector because it's just a data table uh, so therefore based on the data set uh, that we are dealing with uh, that's linked with the widget the options that we see in the view selector will also be uh, vary uh, right so uh, let's see how the visualizer uh, feature that we can use that uh, so same way in dashlet actions if you click here you can see the exploring uh, visualizer option so you can click on that uh, yeah so here uh, we can see what are the columns used in this uh, report and then what are the filters is used uh, in the report and also a data set here uh, so uh, if we go to filters so i can check the logic uh, behind the filter so this filter is basically written to get the birthdays of the current month uh, so you can see this and see if if you're expecting some data from hr side to be shown here but it's not actually shown so maybe if you're familiar with this uh, logics you can come and see uh, why it's not shown maybe it's, it's getting restricted from a filter uh, also uh, another option is so here we have three filters so employee count the birthday filter and the current uh, snapshot so i can uh, so here only i have 11 records basically these are the birthdays uh, for the month of march i can just disable this filter so it will give me uh, all the records so 109 records from uh, so this 
is the number of employees we have in our system. So based on that, users can see, OK, so from which filter that our data set is getting uh, restricted. So based on that, maybe you can go back to GHR and maybe change a date uh, or, or could be an effective date. Something like that can be changed. So if there is a show, uh, so uh, then you can uh, get run the data sync job and then uh, the data will be synced and shown in the um, dashboards. And also you can do a certain level of changes, modifications using the filters as well. Uh, but it's recommended if you're not familiar with the, the, the BI part, always get help from a BI consultant uh, because if you have done something wrong, it might affect the data and the report as well, where you might have to then uh, redo or redevelop the uh, report. Uh, right, so also let's look at some of the uh, reports that has been uh, delivered uh, out of the box. Um, so let's move on to employee analysis. <clears throat> so we saw the overview report. So let's look at another report, let's say job overview. Um, so here you can see a different set of uh, widgets, dashlets related to job overview. Uh, so you can see employee counts, uh, FTs by HR location, counts by education, uh, by work type, job hierarchy, likewise. Uh, and if you have any new employees starting uh, 30 days back, I think the field is 30 days back, uh, you can see the startup uh, details as well. And uh, here you can see key positions and the critical positions. So the position that has marked as key or critical, you can see here. Uh, let's take another one. Let's say uh, average. Okay length of service. Um, yeah, so you can uh, check the average length of service by HR location, uh, could be by our unit, uh, job category, and a total average time in job. So likewise, and also you can maybe change the dates and see. So by 2023, December, what was the uh, average time in job, things like that. Uh, let's look at another dashboard collection. Uh, let's say, okay, time basically an inclusion. Uh, so here again, you can see details on employee gender, then employees by ethnicity type, ethnicity by job level, uh, gender by job level, so things like that. And also, uh, if you want to focus on, on one widget, uh, you can maximize this from here. So all the widgets have that option, maximize. Um, so let's maximize this. So you can have a better view on this. And also this has the option if you want to, let's say, maybe hide this. So you can just click this and it will just get hidden on temporary basis and until you own this. So that, that option is also there. So you can just click again. Uh, so you can enable them. Uh, then you can click on here to minimize. And also uh, you have the option of uh, basically exporting this, uh, let's say the widget, maybe uh, to PDF or even the whole dashboard can be exported. Um, so let's, let's see printable PDF. So it will download a PDF uh, of this feature. Uh, and also here, so if you move your cursor on, you can see the employee counts. So here you can see, uh, yeah, sorry. So this is the the export option, you can export it as a PDF or Excel. Um, you can see the details here as well. Um, yeah, so 
sorry, I was uh, talking about this. So you have, you can see the employee counts. Uh, and then if you want to see details, uh, so if this widget has enabled the drill down option, uh, you can click on this. Uh, so it will give you the data as a table. So you can see uh, there were 55 male employees, so you can get the details and this also can be uh, extracted to a uh, Excel. Extract that as well. Um, yeah, so yeah. So you can see the the table details uh, in a Excel. Yeah. Yeah. So you can work on this as well. Uh, so you doesn't have to go to the system to check everything. Even from here itself, uh, you can check the details uh, uh, based on the on the widget or the data that you want to check. Uh, yeah, so those are the few uh, key features. So let's go back to uh, PPT. Uh, and there are a few more uh, features uh, remaining. So let's, yeah. Um, yeah, so we went through the view selector and explore in visualize. <coughs> and one of the, another main uh, feature that I think is very useful <coughs> is the create notification option where we can uh, schedule emails uh, including a, a data extract attachment on Excel or a PDF uh, for each widget. So for an example, based on your day-to-day -day tasks, if you want to uh, get a list of data, you don't have to go to GHR uh, or come to the dashboard and check every time. You can schedule this uh, notification. So every time can be scheduled day, daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Uh, so whenever you need it, uh, you can have it on, on your inbox as a mail with the uh, data. So it will make your life very easier uh, where you don't have to go and search uh, the data every time in the system. Uh, and then we have the personal dashboard uh, option where Apart from the uh, out of the box uh, dashboards, we can create uh, our personal uh, dashboards and also we can use for ourselves. Uh, if not, uh, we can make them public also. So even the other users can uh, view our personal dashboards. Uh, right, so let's uh, move on to the system and see uh, how we can create notifications and also uh, how we can create a personal dashboard. Um, yeah, so in order to create a notification, so I'll go back to the Indian uh, dashboard, uh, which I created. Uh, so we have a list of birthdays. So let's say I, I need to get a list of birthdays on every month, right? So I can click dash left action go to create notification. So here I can give a um, notification name. So let's say employee to be created. So birthdays. So I use the same thing for my report title and then I can Put my email. So let's say I send me an email. Uh, so you can add a message as well. And then uh, same as the data sync jobs, we have to schedule this. So we can schedule it either daily, weekly, or monthly basis, uh, given the time with the time zone. And you can select the attachment format. So I'll go with Excel. Uh, and let's okay. We we'll go with the same time, uh, and then just click on save. Uh, yeah. So my notification for this birthday widget is being uh, created. 
So there's the option here on the notifications where you can see all the, the notifications that has been um, created. So, so far I have three notifications created. So this is the one I just created, employee birthdays. Uh, so even I can run this uh, on demand as well. So if I want to run it now, I have the option to run it now. Uh, so I have scheduled this to run at 12 a.m., but I can run it now as well. Uh, also, if you want to maybe change the schedule, you can go and edit. So you can change the, the details here. Uh, also, if you want to rename, so you can do the changes accordingly. Uh, yeah, so the, this is a feature that I think it's very useful uh, because we don't have to come and check the data every time. We can have uh, the, the data uh, created on a notification. So every time we need it, we can just uh, check our inbox and we can have that data extraction. So let me check on my email and see whether we uh, received it. Just give me a minute. Uh, hi, Randika. Just a heads up. We have about 15 minutes left and we have a few yeah, questions. Sure. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll just do it. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, so this is the mail I just received with the birthday details. Um, so I'll just open it. Yeah, so I can see the details uh, here. Right, so uh, as we almost have 15 minutes, uh, so maybe let me quickly uh, show you how uh, we can create a, a personal dashboard. Uh, so we can go here in this folder. Um, you can see uh, here all the, the uh, dashboards that has been delivered out of the box. So in order to create, you can click here and create a public collection or a personal collection. So I'll go with the personal collection. Um, and then I have to give the name here for the collection. I'll just go with Sendian and then okay. Yeah, so created the collection and then I can create a report. Uh, so a new dashboard. So we'll give a name here, say Sendian employee analysis. So this is the name of the dashboard. Uh, then I'll go here and maybe, so I can use existing widgets uh, in this. So from the collection, uh, let's say employee counts. Uh, and I say, oh, end of services. Maybe average length of uh, service by HR location. So I can select the widget I need. Click on done. You can add it here. And then you can just move and resize the way you want. So let's just get another one. And so let's go to here and maybe select diversity and inclusion. Um, employee by education so let's go to education and maybe education by job category yeah so it's a different widget where we can see uh employee education based on the job category so we have three employ bachelor employees who has bachelor's degrees in admin job category mm -hmm. so likewise you can add any number of widgets existing widgets and also uh, if you want, you can create a new widget as well, uh, which we, we will not be covering in this session. Uh, we might do another uh, session on BI reports or you can basically do the, the technical uh, parts of it. Uh, and then if you are okay with this, you can click on publish. Mm -hmm. So you will have the hardware dashboard here. So likewise, based on your requirement, uh, you can create widgets uh, and do the changes the way uh, you like. Uh, right, so uh, let's move on to the 
PPT. Um, so we have. Uh, yeah, so those are the main uh, features that we wanted to address and then uh, I'll quickly address about the user management as well. So uh, the analytics side has a separate uh, user management uh, system, so it's a pretty straightforward one. So I'll directly go to the system and explain a few of the uh, features. So it's also under admin. And can go to the user management. Um, so I'll take keep this user. So uh, it's a pretty straightforward uh, screen where you have the status of the user and whether to use admin access or not. Unlock user with its lock, reset password, and then the if you want to delete, you can delete that the user. And here we have the different spaces that the user has access to. So it could be CSF. Uh, so, so we have, as this is admin user, we have access to all the spaces. And this is basically HR related data models. So based on the requirement, we can give access. If it's an HR user, just HR data models. So they uh, should be able to see the HR uh, data set. So the account groups, you can create different account groups. So this is a admin account group. So based on that, you will get the uh, access to different spaces. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, these are the key features uh, that we plan to discuss on today's session. So this is like a very high level uh, session on, on the features. So uh, you may, if you have a test, environment or a dev environment if you have access maybe go to uh, analytics and see what you can do so there are options that you can do changes in terms of the look and feel how you can change the filters and all uh, so then because there are a lot of things that we can do here so if you have time uh, you can just go and maybe do some testing on that uh, yeah, so uh, these are the details that we have planned to discuss today. So I think we can move on to the questions now. Uh, Shirley, do you have any okay. questions? Yes, we do have quite a few questions. So let's try to quickly go through these. So the first one is from Bob, which was answered by Israel. And it was, can burst jobs place a file in a folder? And Israel responded with, we can do that with an IPA. Um, the okay. second question we have is from Phil Verdica. It's could we see something for application requisition or turnover? Um, yeah, let me see uh, because in our test environment, uh, we don't have much data in terms of requisition, uh, but, uh, I but should um, be... if not, Verdica, we can go ahead and follow up via email and we can come uh, back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we might have okay. to, uh, yeah, able to see some turnover, but yeah, we will follow uh, that. Term. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, from Lydia, we have: Can we customize and share dashboards by user or user role? Uh, so basically, uh, to give access uh, to the different dashboards based on the user role, right? Um. Yeah, so to a certain extent, you can uh, based on the uh, different data models that the user has access to. Uh, but in terms of uh, dashboard level, uh, let me check that and get back to you, uh, Lydia. I'm not too sure that the possibility of doing that on dashboard level, but uh, we'll check and get back to you on that. OK, thank you, Randika. Um, from Janelle, we have can you review the HR talent acquisition dashboard? Um, yeah, so actually in this demo environment, we don't have much data in a TA model, so we are still working on that. Uh, therefore, uh, we might not have data in the talent acquisition dashboard, but once it's up and running, maybe we should be able to uh, send you some details on that. Okay. And we can always have another session on that. So if we do, Janelle, yeah. we'll go ahead and follow up with you um, and send you that webinar. Okay, from Gary, we have regarding the export notification to send updated data. I have tried, but as of date, doesn't change. I received the same set of data based on the date, 
that I created the notification notification repeatedly. How do you make the data current? Uh, so how how do uh, do you know which which widget that you have used uh, in Jerry, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so maybe it, it depends on the uh, the widget that we have used now. For an example, the the birthday widget that I just used. So it it until the month of March, it will uh, show the birthdays fallen in March. So maybe if you schedule that on March, you will be getting the same data. But in April, uh, you will get a new set of data. Uh, but I think we might have to go into details and see uh, what. Uh, widget that you have used in order to set up this uh, notification, uh, Jerry. That's it. Yeah, yeah. so Gary, let Jerry. us know if there's anything else um, with that question. And then, uh, yeah. Randiga from Matt, we have is the correct process to delete, reset, then extract and process daily? Um, yeah, because it, it depends on the requirement, uh, Matt. So, in our case, we have done it. Uh, so, uh, because we will be working on JHR and we need to get the data and we will be doing changes in master data. Uh, but if not on a day to day basis, you don't have to uh, do it daily. Uh, so the process is uh, you can just run the normal uh, data extraction process to get your day to day de uh, details. But if you want to do a full delete, maybe you can do it on a weekly basis or monthly basis. Uh, it depends on on how uh, how uh, how you do the changes in your master data uh, and based on that. So the the sequence is if you're running all three, uh, then do the delete first, do the reset, uh, and then do the uh, extraction. But it's not required to do on a daily basis. I mean the delete and the reset uh, variables jobs. Thank you, Rantika. And Javier added on to that question. So Matt, the sequence may not be the best for every tenant, so it's best to review each case individually. Yeah, um, yeah, that's good. And then Janelle followed up with her previous question. Uh, Randika, is there a list of delivered widgets? Um, yes, I think we should be able to get uh, a list of uh, all the widgets. So there are about 400 in uh, as per info. So uh, let me uh, check on that and uh, maybe share that. Uh, you know. Yeah, that would be great. Um, that looks like those are all of our questions. So um, let's go ahead and move to the last slide. All right. So thank you, Randika, and thank you everyone for joining our session today. We hope the session was both insightful and beneficial, and we appreciate all of your participation. So if you guys have any other un unanswered questions or questions down the line, please feel free to reach out to us either through this QR code or the email listed here, supportsendion.com, with any questions or anything that you may have, whether they're related to info modules, reports, processes or any other IT service assistance. So thank you. Your engagement and feedback are important to us and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.